keeping well and keeping very safe, we continue to worship God in these strange times. We have one or two announcements. Just a reminder that the service is being videoed, it's being recorded, and that goes up in YouTube. So if you look at YouTube this afternoon, under Gordon's YouTube address, if you just type in Gordon McAnally, then it, it will come up. Or if you go to the, the church website, Graham will put it up there as well. So there's podcasts, there's videos, or there's a live action. <laughs> and I remind you that the church is open um, on Wednesday morning. And I'll be there if anyone needs to see me. Kirk Session, a reminder that we're meeting a week on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And that will be by Zoom. Zoom. And one of our members passed away, Ben Walker from Heaviside, and died at his funeral be on Wednesday. And I think these are all the, the intimations. We have our call to worship. It's slow. It's slow. It's slow. Right? I'll just, I'll just say it then. Give thanks to God and tell of God's love. Who we'll sing the praises for all that God has done. Call to mind God's wonderful works. Who we'll remember the blessings of God and glorify God forever. Let us worship God. We listen to the hymn 120. Lord of all being. <laughs> Everything. 
everything old has passed away, and see, everything has become new. Thanks be to God that we are forgiven and can make a new start through God's grace. And now we join together and we say our family prayer of the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> and our God is going to read for us from Exodus and from Matthew.
hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Amen. sentenced to life 
and family and friends of those who died were able to tell of their anguish and how their lives had been turned upside down. And there was one woman who talked about how she forgave the man. It was very touching. They were just going about their daily life. In our reading from Exodus today, Moses was going about his daily life. He had grown up in the palace by the Nile. But then he had a fatal altercation with a foreman and he fled to the Sinai. He married. That was his life. He was looking after his father-in-law's sheep. He was a shepherd in the Sinai. And that would have been his life. But then something happened. He caught sight of a fire, a bush on fire. But this was a strange thing. It didn't seem to spread. The scrub around didn't catch a light. And yet also it didn't seem to burn out. He went closer to observe the phenomenon. And then suddenly there was a voice and God called out and his life would never be the same again. Nothing as deadly as Christ Church in New Zealand, but still Moses' life was changed forever. God reminded Moses he was a holy ground, but then it came to the nub of the issue. God had heard the groaning of the Israelites in their oppression and in their slavery. They were miserable and they called out. They cried out to God. Their voices reached heaven and God responded. Just as our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ when he went round Galilee and Judea, he saw the suffering of the people and reached out in love for them, touched them, healed them, brought bread to the hungry and sight to the blind. I know my people's pain, God said. And that's something wonderful for us and the God that we worship recognizes the trials and tribulations which we go through in life of which those who are suffering here in other countries are going through and responds to it. And in our gospel reading today, we read about Jesus taking the way of the cross, the way of sacrificial giving, sacrificing his life for others, a way that would lead to the cross of Calvary. Moses at first observed the burning bush, but he soon found that he couldn't just stay in the background. He was involved. And soon he found that he himself was being called and commissioned despite all his protestations. God was calling him Moses. To be the one to stand up to Pharaoh, to demand that the Israelites be set free. God hears our pain. God recognizes our trials and tribulations. But also God calls us to respond. For Moses, he must have been conscious that he had an Egyptian name. Moses was an Egyptian name. He knew that he'd grown up in the palace and he wondered about his reaction if he was to go back to Egypt. How would people view him? And so he asked God, whom shall I say called me? Whom shall I say sent me? I need a name to give them. And God 
not said, I am who I am, or I will be who I will be. It's a very enigmatic answer. If you go to Post Law Chapel and look up, of course, to the, just now Post Law is closed, but if you remember, above the table, if you look up, there are four Hebrew letters, and that's the name which is given to God in the, the Hebrew Scriptures. For the, the Jews, they wouldn't even pronounce it. They would just call it the name Hashem. Um, because it was too holy to pronounce. But that was all God was giving Moses. I am who I am. But Moses would discover as the weeks went past, as the months went past, and the years went past, that he got to know God more and more, more about the nature, the purpose of God. And that's the same with us as we go through our daily lives, as the months go past and the, the years go past. We get to know God more and more closely by talking with him, by praying with him, by reading about him. We may never see a burning bush, but God asks us to pay attention to our lives, catching sight of the divine in the ordinary, and see where we're called to serve. God calls us but whatever we're called to do, God gives a promise that he gave to Moses that we are never alone, for God is always with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. The hymn 771 is a, a chorus from Zimbabwe, I think. And it's if you believe. We remember those who go hungry 
or face violence in the forgotten corners of our own community and even around the world. We think of those businesses which are struggling. And for all who are uncertain, how to engage with friends and neighbours and still be wise and careful in this time of pandemic. God, Jesus walked the road of suffering with so many in pain and grief. And so we remember all whose lives have faced crises. Those for whom tragic death or unexpected loss, critical illness or injury have come upon them. Surround them with your comfort and compassion. God, Jesus often faced many demands and pressures from his critics. And so we pray for those who found no rest this summer. We pray for all our leaders and all who advise them as they try to figure out ways forward to care for the communities. We think of those whose jobs and responsibilities have changed. And we pray for those who've been involved in, in storms in Louisiana, in riots in Wisconsin, in protests in Belarus, and other instances throughout our world. And in a moment of silence, we bring the prayers of our own hearts before God. Bless you.